So let's start with a simple example uh, of what we analyzed before. So partial u partial t equal to partial v partial uh, x and partial v partial t is equal to partial u partial x. So that is an equation derived out of the wave equation. Right, we analyzed, uh, I think, two lectures before. So once you have such an equation and you want to discretize it in a finite domain, what is proper boundary condition to set? Can we use a similar characteristic analysis on that? Yes, no? Does this equation have a single char characteristic speed? Does it have characteristic speeds? Well, let's take a look. One thing we can do is we can write this as partial partial t of u and v equal to a matrix times partial partial x of u and v. Right? The matrix is just a 1, 1, 0, 0. A way to analyze the characteristic characteristic speed of this equation is by performing an eigenvalue analysis to find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. And what are what are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix? Huh? Eigenvalues are 1 and minus 1. And what are the eigenvectors? So eigenvectors is basically uh, lambda times the, the same vector equal to this times the same vector, right? So for example, if I plug in 1 and 1, what do I get? I get... I mean, matrix vector multiplication, I get 1 and 1, right? Okay, so lambda is equal to 1 in that case. What if I multiply the same thing using 1 and minus 1? Right, matrix vector multiplication, 1 times 0, 1 times minus 1. I get minus 1 here, 1 times 1, minus 1 times, uh, times 0, I get 1 here. Which is, if I pull the minus sign out of here, it's equal to minus 1 times the same vector, right? So I get two eigenvalues, 1 and minus 1. The corresponding eigenvectors are 1, 1 and 1, minus 1. In general, it's not obvious as obvious as this. You need to file up MATLAB and put the matrix into this and call eig to figure out what are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. But in this case, it's just a 1, minus 1. And uh, we can use these eigenvectors, use the eigenvectors to recombine this equation, to perform linear combinations of u and v, to, f to, to decouple them, make them scalar equations. Why do we need to do that? We are, we are doing that. We decouple these equations so that we know which linear combination of the variables should I set on the boundary. Which other linear combination should I leave it alone? Okay, because for example, on the left boundary, on the left boundary, the the characteristics corresponding to one one, which is uh, let, let me let me do the analysis here. So so this is equal to that, and uh, so the eigenvalue eigenvector analysis makes it possible for me to express this matrix as a as a uh, one minus one. So 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 let me. I don't have enough space to write it down here. So this analysis tells me that. If I multiply the, the same matrix 0, 1, 1, 0 times not only this 1, 1 vector, but also this 1, minus 1 vector. So these two columns are basically these two eigenvectors. This would give me uh, 
this would give me 1 and 1 on the first column and minus 1 1 on the second column but if I still write it as uh, if I still write it as this I need to multiply this column by minus 1 which can be done by uh, which can be done by uh, 1 1 1 minus 1 if I want to multiply the first column by 1 I want to put a 1 here if I want to multiply the second column by minus 1 I put a minus 1 here right so this is uh, the proper representation of these <coughs> these eigenvalue eigenvectors in matrix so we want to insert this matrix onto here so what we want to do is we want to multiply this by 1 1 1 minus 1 times 1 1 1 minus 1 inverse right partial partial t of u v is equal to the f the matrix times the first matrix is exactly the right hand side of this eigenvalue eigenvector relation so it is going to be equal to the to this 1 1 1 minus 1 times 1 minus 1 so this is equal to the left hand side and I still have an inverse over here so I have still have a 1 1 1 minus 1 inverse times partial partial x of u and v so there is an inverse here so if I move this matrix to the left hand side what I get is a partial partial t of uh, let me see if I can compute the inverse uh, easily so the inverse of this matrix is the uh, the determinant is 1 minus 1 which is minus 1 minus 1 times 1 so determinant is minus 2 the inverse of this matrix should be uh, the 1 over determinant times so I want to switch uh, these so I still have 1 I still have 1 minus 1 and 1 here is that right da, 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 da. no that's not right I think I I still have I still have 1 here minus 1 here if I take the inverse of the matrix multiply on the left hand side of and right hand side of both equations I get a DDT of half of so this multiply by uh, this u and v multiply, half of u plus v and the column is da, 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 half of u minus v would be equal to 1 minus 1 times partial partial x I also multiply this the inverse inside this of half of u plus v half of u minus v right so this is how we can use the eigenvectors to decouple this equation. So u plus v over 2 is uh, the time derivative is only a function of u plus v over 2. The time derivative of u minus v over 2 is only a function of the of the same function u minus v over 2. And the first component u plus v over 2 propagates at a characteristic speed of plus 1. The other component u minus v over 2 propagates at a characteristic speed of minus 1. So one goes towards the right, one goes towards the left. So let me impose the boundary condition at x equal to 0 on the left side of the domain. Which combination of variables should I specify the boundary condition for and which combination of variables should I not enforce any boundary condition? Yes? Specify for u plus v. Specify for u plus v, which propagates towards the right. All right. And u minus v should be left alone. You know, Suppose I only have information about the function u, what should I do? I know u minus v should be left alone right so I can compute what is locally u minus v and no now if I have the function u if I have information about function u and I have 
the value of u minus v over 2, which comes from inside the domain, then I know what to set about u plus v. Right? So, so the value u minus v, I should grab the information from inside the domain. I have value of u, which I know what it is. That allows me to set what is u plus v. And again, on the right, I have information, let's say again, I have information of u, and I know what is the value of u plus v from inside the domain. That allows me to set u minus v over 2. Good question. So if you have, if you are doing finite difference scheme, you know what is the value on the first grid point inside the domain, right? So depending on how many order of, what is the order of accuracy you want to achieve, you can either just take the value of one, like one grid point inside the domain, or you can take several values and interpolate or extrapolate.